Mac OS 26 has been out in beta form for almost a month now, and it's officially available for the public in the public beta for all of you to try out since about last week. And so I figured now's a good time to give you my early review of Mac OS 26 and what I'm enjoying about the update so far. And I just wanted to give you a TLDR right now. I think this is one of Apple's best updates in years to Mac OS. It definitely has a ton of feature parity, and so you're probably sick of the whole liquid glass design talk, but it's here and it's very prominent throughout Mac OS. Lots of frosted and translucent elements throughout the entire UI. The menu bar just decided to go fully transparent, giving you a cleaner and more seamless look throughout. As I've mentioned in my iOS 26 and iPadOS 26 reviews, Liquid Glass has been toned down quite a bit throughout each beta compared to the initial launch, but I think Apple has found the sweet spot with the latest dev and public betas. You can also customize the appearance for your icons and widgets, and you can go heavy on the Liquid Glass with the new clear option or add new dark and tinted colored icons for an even more personal look. I don't love changing my icons on my iPhone or my iPad, but honestly, I don't mind it on the Mac so much because, well, I don't think I really need to know what the icons look like in order to find the apps that I'm looking for. It's more of an aesthetic thing. Not entirely sure why. Maybe it's because I mostly use Spotlight for everything anyways, and so the icon familiarity is not really a functional need for me anymore on the Mac like it is on my iPhone. Now, before we continue on with the rest of this video, I'm gonna have Dan wearing a completely different shirt tell you more about today's sponsor, Surfshark. I've been traveling a lot lately and it'll only ramp up more as tech season begins to ramp up more. And one of my must haves for travel is a solid VPN to protect my personal data when connecting to all of those sketchy public Wi-Fi networks. With Surfshark, I have the peace of mind knowing that my data is secure with top-notch encryption and leak protection on those public networks. Even if you are in the early planning stages of flight and hotel booking for travel yourself, you can actually use a VPN to get even better prices depending on the location that you change it to. Seriously, give this a shot. It's pretty crazy at how drastic some of these prices can be from one location to the other when using your VPN. But it's more than just a traditional VPN. You also get clean web to block ads and trackers, Surfshark antivirus, a private search tool, and so much more. I even use Surfshark when I'm working remotely or jumping on those sketchy, quote unquote, cafe Wi-Fis. And honestly, it gives me total peace of mind knowing that Maybe the person three seats away from me isn't trying to steal my data, or if they are trying to steal my data, they can't because I am protected with Surfshark VPN. Plus, it lets me unlock content from different countries when I travel, which is super helpful if you're trying to keep up with your favorite shows. So if you want to protect your privacy and support this channel, click the link in the description or simply just go to surfshark.com slash macrumors or use code macrumors at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Speaking of Spotlight, Mac OS 26 brings the biggest update in years to Spotlight Search, and I'm absolutely loving this so far. So when you launch into Spotlight, it won't look different right off the bat until you move the mouse towards it and see four broken off bubbles, and you can select these options with your mouse or use the keyboard shortcuts for better efficiency. This helps you get into your applications, files, actions, and clipboard. Yes, that's right, there's finally a clipboard manager that we can access by simply hitting Command-4, and you can see your entire history of that day so that you can go back and recopy and paste something if you need to. I'm not entirely sure if this will replace my must-have subscription to Paste or any other clipboard manager out there, but I do think it's not entirely off the table, especially if Apple adds more of a history beyond just 24 hours to this clipboard manager in the future. It's nice to have, we're on the right direction, so I'm glad that Apple added this. Command 1 brings up your apps, which you can customize the look of if you aren't a fan of having it broken down in categories and you'd like more of a list view. Or you can simply begin typing out the app that you want. This is also what Launchpad has been replaced with. So if you go down to your dock, you'll see apps where Launchpad used to be, and it'll just bring up the same UI. If you type Command 2, which is where you'll search for files, you can find just about anything these days compared to previous Spotlight versions, where if you tried to type in a keyword, it was more of a hope and a prayer that it'll actually show up and make sure that you get the file that you're looking for. I have found that locating files and even specific emails from a long time ago has been so much better than before. 
Now, perhaps the most intriguing one here is Command 3, or the Actions option. This is where you can run certain macOS actions that are incredibly useful, like being able to send a message or email directly from Spotlight Search. You don't even have to go into the Mail app to enter in the subject of the email and send it off to somebody. So I would just type in my message, then select the recipient, add a subject line, and hit Enter. And you won't see anything, but you'll hear the signature macOS mail sent sound effect with your email immediately on its way. And this is super useful for those really quick, like one or two line emails that you need to send off. You can set quick keys for this as well. So SE is send email. And I can set something else up like ST for set a timer. And I type in how long and boom, a timer has now been set. Super useful stuff here. And I'm just really happy with this update to Spotlight. I think Apple killed it here. Control Center gets that liquid glass design all throughout, but it's also updated to just look and feel more like the control center that we have on our phones and our iPads, which is always nice. Makes things a little bit more consistent. You can also edit Control Center and add new options just like you would on other devices. Of course, you can resize and rearrange this to your liking, and it's just, again, a more consistent experience than what we had before, and I really like that. I'm guessing third-party apps will also start to show up here in the new controls option, but as of right now, I am currently not seeing any. It's just a lot of system functions. A lot of Mac OS 26 is just bringing in the consistent user experience over to the Mac with things like the phone app now being a part of Mac OS. You can make and take phone calls directly from your Mac. You can even access voicemails all without having to pick up your phone at all. Even call screening and hold assist, those new features that are on iOS 26, are all available on the Mac. So you can now screen potential unwanted incoming calls or get back to work when on hold for endless amounts of time using hold assist. I thought it was a little strange to be getting a phone app on your Mac and even the iPad, but it honestly makes more and more sense the more I use Mac OS 26, iPad OS 26, etc. There's also a lot of other little features that didn't make the biggest headlines that I find still to be incredibly useful, like Apple Intelligence in the Reminders app can now auto-categorize your reminders. So here I made a quick packing list for a vacation that I have coming up, and I can turn on auto-categorize with a right click, and it will automatically put those tasks into a clean and organized list. So if you're somebody out there who just brain dumps reminders, you can now just have Apple auto-categorize them so that it just kind of cleans up your life a little bit. In the Notes app, you can now export a note into a markdown file, which I think is something that a lot of people have been asking for. And in the Messages app, it brings over the personalized backgrounds for conversations. You can have polls and typing indicators for group chats. The Photos app also gets a bit of an updated design and brings over pinned collections here that you can add whatever album you'd like so that you can quickly access those photos or videos, well, the whole album really, on that left panel really quickly. There are also a few more new applications for the Mac, like the new Games app, and Journal is now finally being brought over from iOS to macOS. I think the Journal app has been a very heavily requested thing for the Mac since it made its appearance on iPhone. Having more places to journal, especially on the Mac, so if you want to type out a pretty long daily entry, you can do that a lot faster on a keyboard for the Mac. So I think that that's probably going to be something that's used by a lot of people. And then again, we also have the previously mentioned Games app, which is an entirely new app across all the devices this year, and it ties in Game Center functionality, the ability to play certain games with friends, as well as your entire library of games that you've ever played or have on your Mac, including third-party games from platforms like Steam. So this just makes everything so much easier to just access your games, browse for new games, see what your friends are playing, and even get a dedicated section for browsing Apple Arcade games if you like. So overall, I'm absolutely loving macOS 26 so far. And while I don't recommend putting any betas on your main device, I feel like macOS 26 has been the most stable for me so far during testing. I haven't really had any major catastrophic issues so far with apps that are like crucial for me to get work done, like Final Cut Pro, for example. There was a time, I don't remember which one it was, but a few different releases ago, the beta just absolutely crushed Final Cut Pro and I could not use the app at all. And so I put that on my main device and that was a complete nightmare and I'll never do it again. But I am really tempted with this because it does a really good job so far. Mac OS 26 runs really well 
and I am loving all the new aesthetics and new features. But I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about macOS 26? Is there a feature that Apple didn't add or a feature that Apple did add that you really like? Let me know down in those comments.